We had some hyper hyper crickets on that one, huh? Didn't we? Well, guess it's a new day. Yeah, crickets. We're still here. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM412. And I always have a moment of terror as I think, is that number correct? But that number hopefully will get you to the broadcast as a podcast or passcast later when you're searching for it. And uh, the SEOs are doing pretty good through uh, our reallibertymedia.com to give us the broadcast up near the top a lot of times. And I go searching for my own stuff sometimes and see quite a few other people tagging on to the broadcast and reposting it. So thank you very much for all that help and syndication and remirroring. And I forgot a couple times back, thank you just in case for the donation over to Mines uh, quite a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't know if I get through over there. I put a comment, but anyway, I'm really out of touch with all the social media stuff. And um, so we just keep going. And <sighs> folks, I don't know how it's going to end. I see more and more uh, problems, it, although we see the turning out. Uh, it, you all asymptomats are all guilty of symptom deficit disorder if you didn't know. So that's just a presumed guilt on something that no one had any jurisdiction over if you just would send your simple letter to find out whether or not there was a medical report filed on you. And without that medical report pursuant to your own state statutes, there is no jurisdiction in the in the health authority and no uh, emergency authority in the governor to dictate to your life, as they have been forever. So I'm going to touch maybe about that later. It's amazing how this how this governor, the governor of Texas, all of a sudden just stopped COVID-19 pandemic. The nemesis is dead, folks. Just by the, we just dropped it in his communicable tracks by the stroke of, of his executive order pen. Done. Disinfected. Funny, huh? How all this works. So simple. I told you, it's, there's nothing there supporting it. You were living on the right side of history to go after this. And so that's uh, that's really police power, isn't it? And thank you, Grimner, for the audio uh, check. Uh, we're going to continue trying to adjust this uh, audio. I won't spend too much more time. And I, I'm hoping it's better today, a little bit better. We're going to move uh, slowly to try and make it adjusting uh, for all y'all. I have no real way to know this before I get to it, so uh, before I can get to the broadcast to know how good it is or not. Anyway, moving on to this Texas thing, uh, you know, so why, it just with a stroke of a pen, the COVID-19 pandemic nemesis is dead. Stopped in its communicable tracks, as I said. Police power just ends. And so what I want to know is why didn't he just say, don't mess with Texas, before he declared the infectious synthetic barbarian marauder into fraudulent existence. You know, the bar bar. You didn't see a attorney one lift a finger to stop it. He just ends it with a stroke of a pen. And you all live underneath this servitude now. They can do this about any time. And so I told you as this thing starts to relieving, they, they figured out how they can do it. Nobody really responded. A few that did are being dealt with in the ways we would anticipate and that's just to, to stymie the remedies. And lots of it's because a lot of people didn't step up all at once to stop it. And so they realized how to do, how to figure out how to, the, the lack of communication about all this in the right communication. In other words, promoting cases that purport to be going down the right track that don't aren't going to help us out at all. And anyway, trying to throw this whole thing out as this thing starts to turn back off, if it does, mostly will be in some of the more Republican governor states, which may only last as long as those those regimes last as well. And even so, some Republican states are still tied down because they're really not Republicans. They're bringing on an agenda. All these political agents are change agents. And we'll, we'll touch a little bit about that, how that comes in. And I told you it's all here before us. These have been laid out. There's been plans and plotting the whole time. It's In a way, I can say it's easy to see it coming. And I don't know why more people don't don't uh, respond very quickly to stop the nonsense. But it, even as the the governor ended the uh, the, ne- the pandemic nemesis, the experts were responding, electing to manipulate the data once more, proving that their imminent next wave of hang hand wringing contagion uh, to 
to maintain their encore performance as this thing will continue until really people stop it. I don't, I don't really get why this has been continuing. Uh, there are, other, are certain states that are just not going to uh, lift it up, and I don't know. Lots of people, it's interesting how the strongholds are centralized metropolitan areas, city areas, city states now developing. And we're going to see, uh, this is what I'm going to go into from last week. I'm going to keep on going along. A very important thing I couldn't get to that's so important, I'm going to get to it this week a little bit more. Uh, that you see inside the system, there is the urbanites. They're sitting in their city citadels, and they're going to use the rural areas eventually as their sources of uh, existence. Uh, they will prey upon the what's we'll called the rural area. That's a derogatory term on top of that. It's so slow, people don't really pay attention, but we're going to see a little bit in the news that's happened already uh, about this. It interestingly comes up in a discussion I have with my uh, with my colleague, about uh, we were talking about bees and i was interested in when is the uh, for these different areas he's in the highlands i'm in the midlands uh, relative to environment and terror and ter- temperatures and i wanted to know when the swarms are going to be because i got to get ready this year i'm threatening myself with those things still and i finally got the swarm hives done but i've got to kind of get ready for them because i've never seen a, sw- a, a, a swarm out here uh, as i've looked around it's it's like fishing. You got to you got to be where they where the fish are. You got to put your lure where the fish is. At any rate, so uh, talking with him, he brought up a conversation. He says, you know, he's de- dealing with these organizations. He wants to do a uh, he wants to promote, if you will, feral bees, which he was told quickly, don't call them feral bees. They're wildland bees. And this brought up another whole other thing about terminology and how much this is so important to get straight about this terminology they use against us. And uh, this, my friend here, he's the one of the guys in the Jefferson Mining District, one of the miners that's a, a tip of the spear of getting things done. He's uh, somewhat of our, our papered, our, he's got a degree out of Berkeley. He's our papered uh, college-educated uh, guy that we can throw out in front of, of a lot of these people that are in the government uh, to thwart their so-called science. And uh, he brings the real sound. He was in before that all happened. And before, and he could see the change going on, and everything. He's an engine, more of an engineer than a mining engineer at that, and and he saw problems stop, things stop making sense. So, uh, been a long a relationship with him to explain how this all works, focus him on how this thing is working, and he comes up with this new terminology. It wasn't just uh, dealing with bees, no less, and this is all another stalking horse. These are things used by these people that are changing and transforming your world to the thing, the future they want as opposed to anything you ever thought uh, or, or, or considered or will be considered for you. And uh, this is what we're seeing in the news coming. But he, he was confronted with a new term, something, the, the term beyond sustainability. And uh, this is a pretty matter-of-fact guy. He just doesn't understand a lot of this stuff sometimes. And so I quickly pulled together something for him to explain really what he's looking at. Beyond sustainability is not even a new term. It's just that it's becoming rising to the top. It's the thing that's now going to be moving the implementation of what they were trying to do, as I told you was coming and going to be, but it's becoming now more in the news, so they creep it in. But you're going to find out, and I hope I'm going to show you, and this is why this is so po- important. Uh, this is the city citadels that are running your life. This is where the university system sits. But their thinkers, their academia inside there, work out how literally they're going to subvert the country because they sit in their little city-states, but the countryside, the people, or what they're going to adversely affect. And those people, you, are not part of their plan. You are actually in in the way. And so this is where we started to identify things, and I was able to show him relative to mining grant law and disposal of lands and highway disposal, the land underneath the so-called highway they call you is regulable, is not. The granted disposal of ingress and egress doesn't have, it's in, it's in production, it's not in commerce. And I was able to show him how all this works. And I said, well, you're looking beyond sustainability. You're looking at the promotion now. And through bees, through honeybees, no less, of how they're moving through things. Let me, I said, let me, let me do some checking and let me see if I can tie some things together. Well, lo and behold, <laughs> as I go through quickly, because once you see the terminology, you know where to go. He sends me a link. Uh, uh, it's a honeybee thing. I don't even know that the organization is really not relevant. It's just that. Once you see and you see the words, you know, I know exactly where I'm going to go and where, where I'm going to end up. And it's, I don't really focus on the fact I'm going to end up there, but it's really, I haven't found any way not to end up end up where you end up end up going, utilizing just the terminology. 
And I said, what you're looking at there is a subversion of actually, uh, again, the bees being a stocking horse, like uh, the native peoples in the con- in any country being the stocking horse, like the women and children in, in the UN indigenous being stocking horses. The cause of the of those particular classes of people being used against them, and they don't know it. They're being used to move this forward under the warm and fuzzy words, thriving and resilience and all this other nonsense is important to keep track of because you're looking at the enemy of an American way of life, a way of life that regards property, regards a a system of protection of the property, regards trespass, which you see destroyed by COVID, the imposition of guilt instead of being innocent is not new and to this only but it's it's like an adaption adaptation of the system of these people these academics that are coming forward to transform your life and so looking through the beyond sustainable development condition i wrote a, a couple of things which i want to kind of just recite back to you to sh- to set up what this concept that i was talking about which redeems into innovative innovation zones and it all sounds cool, and it all sounds really great until you really look at the underpinnings. And when you see what these underpinnings are, and you understand what they're after, like I said, I look for things like the word leverage or leveraging, and you're going to find this here as well. And what they're doing is they're taking your own, notwithstanding the money problem, what money isn't, finances, financial structures, even debt, government-provided debt or grants which is typically supposedly said to be paid by taxpayers in the cities and in the counties. It's paid by property owners. That's every one of you, whether you rent or not, whether you own or not. All y'all complain about being a renter of, a, of your own land, that own land, you don't understand your own property rights. And you haven't done the taking the steps that it takes in order to try and extricate yourself from that oppression. It's not supposed to be on your land. But getting back to this, these academics have figured out how to reach out into the Urb, uh, rural areas, the urbanites, it's the urban-rural divide. They created that term for a reason. Anybody lives outside these urban areas, these city, city, city citadels, these metro areas, is likely on their uh, targeting. So now these innovation zones are a, f- a pretty colorful word that allows them to work on this leverage funding, that they're going to go after more taxpayer par- there's parasite using your own money against you. And we can all turn our head against this, and we can all maybe say it doesn't bother me. But that the incrementalism will eventually bother you. And it's going to it's already bothering you and your if you still consider your property to be yours but you still pay property tax under the fraud of ad valorem taxation and taxability, reducing your property, your real your your grant land grant to to a real property of less than fee simple holding, then you are willing to pay for this destruction of your life by someone else taking this money from from the system who's figured out how to take the money from the system. And so this is the underpinning of an email I had weeks and weeks ago, projects I still have to get back to. But that the emailer knew this is not probably not a good thing. And so I I hadn't heard about this for quite a while. It ends up coming back through for this beyond sustainable development idea and I write to my colleague and saying and explaining to him what he's up against, what he's dealing with in that. But here's the point. You know your enemy, and then you know how to deal with it or not to deal with it, and how to not engage or empower that system, and how to counter that system. It's his, his intention, in this case we were talking about, his intention is to build honeybees uh, populations uh, in the wild. And not just honeybees, but also pollinators, which becomes another point of this. And these people are using this, and the warm and fuzzy feeling that people get around honeybees, a marvelous, fantastic critter, but a critter nonetheless. I mean, people don't wear bee suits because their bees love them. And so this is a, again, it's a management thing. It's a ranching thing. If bees could produce milk, and they might, in a way, (laughs) they'd be considered mammals. They've got hair. They, They don't bear quite live young, but they're pretty close. (laughs) <laughs> they're colonies they live in they live in a very sophisticated world they're very if i could say intelligent in their in their sphere uh, but they're a force to be reckoned with and uh, you don't turn your back on them that's for sure you don't abuse them too much 
unless you're going to kill them off, and then what's your purpose? But anyway, so he wants to build them these pollinator populations up. And because we're dealing in wildland, he's he's wild, he's into all that. But he walks up against people that he, they call themselves organizations that also claim to want to do that, but they say that they're they're off they're offering a plan that's beyond sustainable development. And I offered to him that this is a tandem to sustainable development, but it's you'll see it in the word growth. What this part of this is is the term you've heard growth in all these metropolitan areas and all these areas and these counties. They all want to have growth. People think that that's like their economic advantage. They want to see. Well, a lot of us don't want to see growth. They don't care what what defines it. You just want to be left alone. More growth means more people, more interaction, more problems, more government. Notwithstanding all that. This growth is not a good growth. This growth is the future we want growth. And it's used as a parasitic element under leveraged funding, what I identified in 2013, which causes us to actually trigger the lawsuit because we follow, I got the money. I didn't follow the money. I didn't have to follow the money. I knew that once that money was being used as a leveraging condition, I knew that the creature, the amoeba, the parasitic amoeba we were dealing with, and that became the impetus for the suit. It wasn't like sustainable development was violating people's rights. It is, but that's not how we started. And again, so if you look at that case, you have to really understand what what it's doing and what it, how it approached it. And it's not a straightforward attack, as I've told you before. You have to understand the battlefield. You can't come straight at this. It's too much bigger than we are. But I told him that uh, this is growth. Another term, this beyond sustainable development is another phrase to come around with, which one is growth. And it's uh, this strategic planned growth and it's been with us for decades and i'm going to show you how this this innovative zones stuff in nevada as i'm going to talk about this more depth it, it brings up all these elements it's all in there if you just quickly look, look for it you, it's not a question what's going on to us and what in our silence what we're allowing uh, to come against us uh, but uh, so nobody understands this growth thing but it's pitched in terms of like economics, economic development, but understand economic equality, economic is a pillar of the sustainable development model. Understand they're moving that model to instead of pillars to Venn diagrams, interlocking circles. Okay. And so this is, imp- I know it's a lot, but anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's not so much once you see it. And I told you before, once you do the deep dive and you do the analysis, it's kind of like the COVID. Once you see that there's just no way to, that the test is not a test, there's no science, there's no actual application, all that becomes that knowledge you just have in your head that you realize you look right, that becomes the filter with which you observe and witness and you look right through all that noise, which is overwhelming if you don't get a handle on it and nothing once you do. You don't even use it. I don't even use it. I just know as soon as I see this, the clues, I'm on them. Now, then I make the, we make the decision, in this case, if I'm talking with my colleague and through GMD or if we're going to make a comment, what the strategy is to counter that. Then really the simple strategy is just bring the law. Bring the law and make sure that no one turns from it. And every time we have, we've shut down agencies trying to take action. This becomes important later as well when I get hopefully get to these tabs. It ends up tying all together today for people that will listen longer than a few minutes. And I, and I know maybe I'm already deeper than a lot of people want to uh, gather, but again, this is my world. This is what I come across in trying to resolve problems for people. Once I can identify this for them, I can show, I suggest path pathways that it, it doesn't affect them once they understand. So uh, this is growth and development under the economic pillar of sustainable development. So it's not really beyond sustainable development. It's just promoted that way. And this growth comes irrespective of actual local need and is intrinsically tied to the parasitic leverage funding. Okay, so they'll claim it's local, but this is localism. And we even see this in a document. And so those of us, like William Roberts, was he was great to focus on this, but again, his, he was a political view, become, a, become vocal local, but his was a political view to end the political parties. And yet, his realization through the sustainable development things, you know, these things like Agenda 21, the UN documentation out, that's out there, would inform him, based on all his other study in the encyclopedias, would inform him he, the power was for us local. And it was, I've so, and I've told you, this is 
these people are not, these are academics. They sit all day to think about this stuff, and they figure out what is going to be needed. They know that the action is local, and they so they've come in so kind of before us to set up that they're working local. But this is local to go global, and what we're trying to do is go local to stay local. And that's, so we keep our power, and our power is not like we can go around thumping on people. Our power is to be protected from this interference. And you're not going to, I don't know if you're going to find, I only know, I think, one, a political officer, a, um, a commissioner. I only know one, I think, that I would say is not into this system. Everyone else I see, any other commissioner I know, is in this system. I even have one that denied that they're in this, that they, that they see the problem. And the first acts they did were to flip everything they said on an election and start to do exactly what the agenda was. As soon as that happened, I cut any ties I had with that uh, individual. And he was deceiving people. And uh, that's not good because then it, it stops our, our production, our protection, protection and the angles we use because they're not being listened to then. And it's partly why I tell you, I can't directly talk to people in government. When I'm talking to an attorney, which we've been, I've been invited, the JMD has been invited to talk to county attorney, county attorneys. And when I, we expose what the law would require, and we expose that what they're attempting to pull through regulation or advice to the commissioners is really contrary to law, then we point out that to do that is, a, is really the, the felonies that I tell you about. We never get a word back. We never get to talk to them again. Because the the attorneys see what we're doing, and we're not doing anything more than asserting the law. Because what they're both doing is they're ter- asserting either legal and or this agenda, which I have told you behind the woodshed here. I've displayed for you the American Bar Association documents that says they promote sustainable development. This is not a joke. This was part and parcel to the Tennessee lawsuit that's going on right now. That the Bar Association members are essentially teaming up uh, together uh, to defeat a challenge in law. And they're essentially putting this, what we've talked about, reflexive law on this. It's a reflex action. It's not based in law, and it's based in the sentiment. And this is where equity becomes a problem, because the conscience of the court comes to bear in equity. And the conscience of the court is amenable to promoting sustainable development, which is the demise of people and property rights. And so we have a serious problem in this country, way beyond what I hear being talked about. And yet, and, and in some regards, it is very complicated. But in other regards, like I tell you, when, I, when you see it, anybody who I explain this to, who is a doer, who gets after it, who takes their strengths and starts applying it, and better than me, able to understand how to communicate to someone else to, do get, to actually get it worked out. I seem to be the repository of the strategies more than the implementation. Those that can take what I tell them and put them in implementation have been doing very well to counter. This gentleman, my colleague, is one of those guys. He's uh, He just knows he's got a lot of background. He's got the credentials to stop just about anything that they use. When they come to science, he shows how they don't know anything. And this will come out a little bit later. I better get to this. So sustainable development is beyond sustainable development. I told you this year they're moving. They're going to start to really move this on. This is what this is, and he, he's now hearing about it. Uh, and it ends up, as I did a study, it starts to come into what I dropped off last week and uh, moving this back through back to this, the, that I'm writing to him here and just reading quickly through. The UN growth, this is growth, UN growth, ungrowth, is United Nations growth, the term, is a more radical political transformation extension. All right, so this is the next iteration of how they're moving it forward. The next move to implement sustainable development. The old terms are still there in the descriptors of the intention. The APIS or Bee, Honeybee website doesn't wait long to promote how radical it intends to get, quote, our Earth's ecosystems, e- listen to ecosystems, it comes up later here real soon, calls for a radical redesign. Now, I don't know who asked them, but we were supposed to just let the world do its thing, uh, Earth does its thing, and yet these people want to even transform nature itself underneath a stocking horse that nature is threatened. It's fascinating how these people do this, and everyone buys into it. Anyway, here's, uh, then here's a discussion beyond sustainability integrating the risk management, which is identifying and mitigating any threat to the fulfillment of sustainable development. 
So remember, I talked to you about risk management. This is what they're moving into. This is what this this next implementation has been. As I've talked to you, what we do to, in the fire, the, the risk management for fire and how we stop the fire. And we use policy, folks. For those of you that want to say, oh, policy, you know, policy is not law. We use policy to stop it. I've told you all, all about that. So I'm just, re, I don't want to re, reiterate all I've talked about. And I really do apologize. I don't know where to send you. I don't have, I have these episode numbers just to find what I'm talking, find that I'm talking about something and the list from the blogcaster. I'm, I'm not set up so formalized. I don't have a producer that organizes what I talk about to send you to a specific broadcast. At that point, I apologize, but there's nothing more I know to do than to give you the information and hope that you're listening long enough to, I, I just know that people that want to do stuff listen long enough to start doing stuff. And if not, and if you're that close, you then give me an email and I try to show you what you might be dealing with and where to go. And then this last few, I mean, it's been about a month now or maybe more. I've just been overwhelmed uh, to get to too many people, so I'm I'm apologizing for that too. But anyway, there's nothing more I can do about it that my time has kind of been bogged down a bit on some really important things to develop. And it's really in the along these same lines. That's why it's easy for me to jump from subject matter to subject matter. Our main attack is coming from these types of things, these people, which comes up out of the blue through honeybees, is which I guess part of the, part of the problem. But I thought that this position would get me back. I thought it was integrated because I couldn't remember all the memory stuff I have in my head. I forget where I got it. That came up interesting last yesterday. Don't know where I hear. I know information's out there. I can't remember where I heard it. But at any rate, uh, getting to this, I said, let me do a quick dive and let me let me see if I can tie it together for you. Well, this, so it comes down beyond sustainable de- development is growth. And growth is just sustainable development. It's the action part of it. It's also tied to strategic plans. It's also tied to the leverage funding. And so as I went through, I could start finding all this. But there's other terms that I want you to be aware of that you're going to start seeing. It's, it's already out there as a point. I'm not, I don't look around and say, oh, this is, oh, oh, now, no, I mean, this is now just starting. This has already been there. It's just that no one's attention's been called to it. And so I put this together quickly to identify this. It's the other consistent, the other term consistent with implementation is the term regenerative. Regenerative. And you'll see this. When you, and look at the organizations tied to these words, and they're already implementing. They're all corporations for the most part, or non-governmental organizations. And uh, this is critical when you start looking at the documentation, who's involved. They're all involved. We partly heard that through the COVID. Walmart had set up that they're going to do certain things. They're planning on doing certain things to interfere with your access to food and to get you to transform your life in their corporate plan that's attached to other corporations doing the same thing. But you'll find regenerative is similar to this growth. It's attached to how how this transformation happens, but whether characterized in, in any area, agriculture, approach, the word approach, it's regenerative approach, regenerative agriculture, regenerative businesses, regenerative design, development, sustainable sustainability itself is regenerative. Okay, so... The word regenerative is this adjective that just shows, for me, it just says, okay, I'm dealing with these people. This is not just a word. This is a serious notice and threat. And I said, uh, so and then uh, there's also the word restorative, and then it's tied to urban. So we have the urban, again, we'll tie this all back to urbanites, all this to, to the city citadel that's going, that's reaching out into the rural. By the word rural, they're condemning the country folk as derogative. And they've made war on the rural area. Why? Because they can't, a city state can't s- sustain itself. It's not, it's, it's reliant on production. And this is what you start, this is what we start realizing way early on. This is way back in 20 something, 2013 and stuff. I'm talking now through the Jefferson Mining District, talking with the guys and say, okay, this is what we're up against. This is what our comments are speaking to just prior to the lawsuit, as, fact, as a matter of fact. And so this is what, what's, this is the, 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 this facade that's looking over this that we have to pierce, the veil that we have to pierce, and I think we did, and I think we continue to do that, to the point that the system politi- politics is having to change their own game up to avoid what we do. And that's what I told you about the stealing of your of your public lands and put them into conservation, which is essentially waste, which is a violation of international law. Your Congress is doing this. Uh, anyway, on and on. Oh, this goes on and on. So urban, rural, divide. The urbanites are attacking the rural, the country folk. And I say country because the word country folk or country or folk 
or all the common people on the ground, not this tertiary academic third uh, third level bottom. It's actually down level third level tertiary governance. It's actually quaternary governance. It's on top. It sits on top and feeds off of the tertiary government, which is all your licensees. As I told you before, that's the the, the, the tertiary is the, the the government and all its licensees, and right below that's your service industry to the, that second level, and then the first level of so-called economy is your production, which the service industry services to keep the production going, which the tertiary government has attacked, and the parasites in the in the quaternary uh, academia of urbanites has using the third tertiary government and funding by leveraging that to attack production to take it for themselves, to high-grade it to themselves. And I, this is really oddball stuff to even, to even talk about. As I talk about this stuff, I think, man, people don't quite get this. But this is part of the attack on your country. Why you are hearing so much nonsense coming out? And when I told you, like, Vilsack, who's now back in, told all the people in the Midwest, all the farmers and ranchers there, you are politically inert. We're going to tell you what's coming down. And that... I told you years and years ago was the declaration of war in earnest. So you have the term restorative as tied to the term urban. And you'll see this here coming here as well. And then I say, uh, I'm, I'm writing to him and say, you may have noticed uh, the recent news in Nevada on innovation zones and private landowners operating as county governments. This is promoted by the university system as well as by UN Habitat and Urban Thinkers. And I provide him a link to the Urban Thinkers. I think I'm going to have this here later on the broadcast when I get to those tabs. Uh, you can see this for yourself. This is not just a, deliri a delirious uh, discussion. It's all in paper, all in documents. I guess it's in paper when you print it. I get it on a digital screen. I don't have the money to pay for paper. So I just it is a, a paperless office as much as I can see for myself. But anyway. Uh, for me, it's it's knowledge and then, and then implementation. So I don't carry around a lot of uh, libraries. Partly it's a problem. Sometimes, I, like I said, memory hole, it's hard to find information again. But anyway, urban thinkers, urban thinkers. These are not people that are thinking about you, I can tell you that. And urban thinkers are not thinking about anything country or rural. So understand when they're, this, this, they call themselves these things, they're actually, this, they're, they're separating themselves from you as well. And there's a statement on the Urban Thinkers uh, UNHabitat.org site. Uh, for a better urban future, here's a discussion, and then I say here's the discussion from the EU, and you'll see as I'm moving through this thing in more links, European business innovation and improvement zones are connected to sustainable development pillars and that the terms are attached and how these can also be identified in parentheses in the quote that they say on the site. The challenge is to change the negative impact of business sites and production into a positive one for economy, parenthetically innovation and competitiveness, environment, parenthetically improvement of nature, quality and biodiversity, and society, parenthetically multifunction and social inclusion, etc., so this ties directly into the old sustainable development they're moving beyond. It's really just an implementation. So as I as I say, this is the old, is out with the old here and in with the beyond. More radical neo-old is what I write to him. And so this is what we're looking at. They're moving the same, they're just moving the agenda on and they're now coming more broadly to come and be for them, um, paid essentially, be Setting up, they got governments, people in government already to allow them, and this is where we get to the Nevada, to allow the next iteration to actually put a foothold in your rural area that they want so bad, and then make that a closer connection to the city citadel as an outreach center, if you will, a, a whole county size, size thing, 58,000 acres, that they handle through a private administration of government. And uh, I want to point out before I, if I miss it, that all this information sits here. If you look at these innovation zones, and this you see they're in the EU already. This is already working, folks. This is nothing new. They're just new to us or our awareness because they've been planning this for, you know, I'll find one document here, 30 or something years. 
as I've told you, back in the 80s, they, they put in all the codes they needed in order to implement all of this stuff. And right before that, in the 70s, they implemented land use. Land use coding that was conditioning your property rights. And I heard nary a peep on any of that. And anything I told to people to try and show that that was not right would not be passed. And I've told you that if you make the question, you make your record correctly, there's no court that can actually make a decision against your patent rights. And that's forever. That's not my words. That's just what the document says. If I go by document and evidences of title, the ev ultimate evidence is the, is the patent for any piece of land. And there are, you have the, your rights that cannot be assailed by a judge. And so I looked at that and I said, well, there you go. Then we got rid of the Bar Association right now, and then we found a, a criminal trespasser under color of law, a felon, if they do touch it. And so far, as I can see, as I started to get this implemented and doing it through collateral attacks on things like traffic tickets and or taxes and all this other thing, which I don't want to promote, but you have to know a ton more than what I'm going to tell you here, just, oh, I'm going to get to go after them with taxes, that uh, they will not respond. They cannot, and they stop. I don't know if that's a passive tug of war, uh, but there's no more action at that point. So there's something to this, although it's not settled because we're an occupied country, and there's not enough people clamoring for freedom. And we saw COVID. I mean, COVID, almost, I almost, I'm about ready to throw my hands up on this relative to the people and their so-called being free and what they'll accept and what they won't and what they'll talk about and what they won't do. So let me move into the innovation zones that we see now as global. It's all tied to UN Habitat. It's, uh, the modernization here is well. You won't hear too much of that today, but modernization acts were part of this. Housing, habitat, food security, right? You're going to hear all these things eventually as you look through these issues. That This is already in your major cities. This is already attacking you rural folks. What we do at JMD is to try and stop, to try and, and, and push them back. And you know, hoping beyond hope more people would show up, but really nobody does. And I've told you the microcosm of the minor, the not the young goat, the kid, that they've deemed to be their the state's child and not your offspring. You've heard me talk about all this. They are attacking you, and you don't even understand how that's coming. And until we get that figured out, it's just going to be a short time, I think. A short time is relative, I suppose. They've taken 30 years to get here. I think they've already got it. 30 years is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to how fast this may be rolling out. As I've told you how it's been coming, the smart things coming, your governments are already eaten out from the inside, and nobody really knows how to begin the process. But anyway, it's there. I've been telling you over time, and in a way that I hope won't get us cut off from the major distribution systems, like things like YouTube and such, even though I don't go there directly. We go through the RL Real Limited Media as a network. There's no one content that comes out which is helping to, I think, preserve a little bit of a protection. And as I say that, I think I was a, a remiss to misunderstand. Normalization of ignorance YouTube account looks like they're back up reposting uh, material from Behind Woodshed. And uh, thank you for being there. I, I thought it was up until March. I, maybe it was in February. But uh, I haven't mentioned ig uh, normalization of ignorance is reposting the broadcast to get more people to find it. And it, apparently our, our numbers there came back with a vengeance. I just just able to check it out the other night as I was passing through. I go, oh, I wonder how they're doing. Sound Minds might be back on their secondary channel. I don't know uh, too much on that. But anyway, so the, the censorship is incre incredible. And I've been trying to apply those this method to try to avoid all that and uh, just to get the word out. It, however disparate it is, however un uh, able people might be able to do episode by episode. Where did I speak about that? I have people asking about habeas and this, and what do I do? And it's all in the past. It's all in the past broadcast. You got to research search it down. I don't know what really more to say. I didn't anyway. So let's get off of that. You got to do a little bit of work to do some of the researching. If you have a question for where I can show you, I might be able to find it. But I have to go search myself. So to me, it's kind of an interesting problem. I have to go when you ask a question. Sometimes I have to go ask. I go to a search engine to go find what. When did I say that? And so, and then we find, and then I find out for myself because I don't keep track of all that. So, moving back in the innovation zone, it's global. It's UN. It's UN Habitat. It's modernization. It's the transfer, transformation through risk management being implemented. And the risk management is the risk to the system being found out. They don't want you to know, and they're going to do everything to analyze the data to keep themselves viable. 
and you'll see this in the word. So let me get to the to the to the innovation zones that are now being promoted, and they're all over the place. This is one that's the only one that's being promoted. It hit the news so that more people could see it. A bill would allow tech companies to create local governments. I touched on this. I'm going to say a little bit more because it ties into this greater war that's going on against the urban rural divide. is is not a it's it, talk about the north and the south. You know, Hatfields and McCoys, this is worse than all of those combined. And everybody's letting it happen. But uh, Bill would uh, allow tech companies to create local governments. Well, just to think about that just a little bit. If you And this is in Carson, coming out of Carson City. I think that's the seat of Nevada. If you're a uh, seat of government out of Nevada, the seat of government out of Nevada, they're talking governance as well, moving into the corporations running your corporate towns. These are company store towns, essentially, when you look at it that way as well. Uh, you, if you've got enough money, acres upon acres of undeveloped land and innovation technology, quote, innovation technology as a term, you soon could form a local government in Nevada. When the government, Steve Sisolak, last month announced this plan to launch innovation zones in Nevada the jump start, to jumpstart the state's economy by attracting new tech companies, the details of how th- those zones would operate proved scarce. Just look at that. How is tech companies, when no one's working to pay the bills, how are tech companies going to help you? This is all about infrastructure and keeping them viable technocratically. And so this is a big promotion that they want to say, oh, we're going to make zones. They used to be called clusters. These were managed, and the, and the real estate agents were the first ones to be involved. I'm going to show you the, the real estate, if you will, company. A development company is involved in this and this is these kinds of things as well. It ends up being all integrated, inclusive, but only for them, not you. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, the, the zoo, they would, uh, details prove scarce. Well, they're really not scarce. They're a little bit abstract, but they're not scarce if you know where to look. Going on, according to a draft of the proposed legislation obtained by the Review Journal, uh, as I'm, that's the website here, uh, but not yet introduced to, in the legislature, innovation zones, would allow tech companies like Blockchains LLC to effectively form separate governments in Nevada, governments that would carry the same authority as a county, the same authority as a county, the foundation of your Republican form. They mimic the very same thing, but there's going to be differences. But they have the same authority as a county, including the ability to impose taxes, form school districts, and justice courts, and provide government services to name a few duties. Now, if that doesn't uh, get you crinkling up inside shoulders, I don't know, being upset a bit, maybe you're not paying attention. Go back to Blockchain's LLC. What have I told you about the blockchain system? What have I told you about blockchain and properties and what they did in Texas? Don't mess with Texas. I told you they're messing with you, Texas. Just like your governor messes with you, and by the stroke of a pin, all of a sudden your COVID pandemic is over. Not a test. But they did it. And that's how this is running. And we are, but I didn't say it and finish it. As I said this again, they have the same power, but they don't have the same reference of who puts them in power in the corporate boards that run these places. These are, I think, 58,000 acres large without development right now that a corporation can buy. Can we speak maybe to what Bill Gates was doing? And we'll implement their own town. And once they come to the services capacity, the county, they will petition the government, the, the state government, for the right to become the county within a county. Well, there's all kinds of problems with this, but I'm not going to get that deep. If no one cares, really, I don't know what to say. I'm going to say it anyway. I want to be on the record to even talk about it. Whether I'm, I mean, whether anybody really wants to hear it or not, or does anything with it. This is serious problems and serious stuff. And when you start looking at it, you start realizing, if you will, the founders had an important role in, in, in guiding us that. That, that republic that we should keep, we really should keep it. Because this is where the future they want, they call it the future we want, is going. And they want abject control. And they're going to make company towns that will have the power of counties. But they're not a county. And their power is not derived by the elected, the consent of the governed, which is the other fraudulent license that government gives itself to, to, to destroy you, to beat you up. But notwithstanding that, these will be given power, but they're not elected officials. They're corporations given the power, and they are selected by the governor. And if you want to understand how terrible that would be, just go look at Oregon and what's going on with that state, which is almost like a big company store. 
where the governor has been given almost absolute power. Maybe the empress, you can call it the empress. And nobody that, that we had court say, again, the colleague that I, I taught was talking about in the beginning of the broadcast, he was involved with being just outside of knowing of two lawsuits with people that were from within the government, tried to sue to stop that. And they did all the wrong arguments. And he suggested what they were supposed to do. And once they saw what it was they were supposed to do, the attorneys turned on that, convinced them not to go down that path. And they didn't. And so we they, they lost. They backed off. And so this is the power of the Bar Association and people in ignorance who don't understand it will be guided by the th- by their by their fear, by threats. That this is already these people are already in the system to subvert you, to allow this sort of thing. That we go back to the blockchains LLC. The blockchain is that so called smart technology that ties you into everything. As I said, over time, you don't see this happening. It's going to be hard to believe that anybody anywhere where you live that isn't in this couldn't be this. But this is just one step degree away from metropolitan areas just going ahead and doing this themselves. These are innovation zones that are really the incubators for how this is going to work. It's what Google was trying to do in Canada that got stopped. But the government wasn't quite going to go there that fast. If you look at the size of the land, it's kind of it – was, it was big. It was a, a sizable piece and chunk that they were trying to interject themselves. But So this is already here. It's now proposed legislation. These corporations have the right to power of tax and justice courts. If you think the courts are corrupt now, wait till that happens. And you're, this is like one big private property that you have renters on, but it functions more like a government. It's shifting how a corporation functions to look like the government that the, corp, the certain governments are today function like. So you see the mimic going on. It's not much different than what's happening today, partly because people don't step up and protect themselves and show the government's not the government. It's become the governance. And uh, this is, and then you show them where they breach the trust, if you will. And so these are called groundbreaking technologies that are coming. It's all tech. These are publicly funded incentive packages. So here's your leverage funding, speaking right through the state legislature. They're going to tax the people to impose these private eventual counties, county issues in those areas. And they're going to give private subsidy to landowners in order to privatize government over time. These are developing fart, you know, fart city, smart cities. Blockchain LLC is saying they're going to develop smart cities. It's right in this article. You just read it. And so what is this innovation zone? But let's just go look at a couple of things. Just quickly, uh, what are these things? Have you heard them before? How dangerous can they be? With well, they're inno- innovation. How can they be bad? Well, again, the innovation has nothing to do with what you think innovation is. It has to do with promoting their thing, what they're doing. And what they're doing, you notice, is tr- attempting to make the law value that in order to incentivize it. Then they all of a sudden go into publicly funding it. How? I don't know. But they do. And if they get the legislature to agree, which most of the legislature is an attorney or a dumb or a dumb attorney or someone who's already involved, one of the already of the green religion, you're, that's the majority of your legislatures. For, forget your political factions. You're, you're watching. Just forget the politics. Uh, you've got people that are in green religion adherents. And that's the greatest thing they can do. They're doing a, they're doing. Uh, they're a gift to humanity for what they do. And so don't don't think that you're talking again that you having a contrary print is going to go anywhere when they, they're going to look at you and think that, well, what, don't you love people? Uh, don't you love your fellow man? Well, I'm, a, I'm doing everything to help us. What are you doing besides challenging them? So this is not, you can't, uh, you, again, you can't attack this directly, but uh, these people in innovation zones have this high aspiration. Somewhere they've been given this idea that they can think about these things as what we do, and this is coming out of UK, to show you it's global, it's already implementing. What we do is innovation zones at qub.ac.uk, tackling societal challenges through innovation. Now, who these people thought they were to tackle societal challenges and then through innovation, I don't know. But these people are in the world, and there's a lot more of them than you might think. And you're in areas, again, if you have a metro areas, it just takes a couple in a state to destroy the countryside. The rest of the people may not agree with it. And they like large part, they don't. 
In fact, in I think it's in Oregon. Uh, one of my criticisms is that even if the Republican Party party would get together, they could overthrow the Democrats in the office, and they won't. It doesn't matter, but they aren't using their political will, notwithstanding the voter problem, the, the election problem. But they're not the the majority of the folk in the countryside, outside the metro areas, the city citadels, are the majority of the people. But they're in the way the government's structured. It doesn't allow them much political power. Like Vilsack said to the middle of the country, the whole entire production sector in the middle of the country, you're politically inert. And the people agreed to that. And that's what, again, it's just moving on. They just tell you that we're here to stand in, we're Genghis Khan, and we're here to interfere with your life, and you can't do anything about it. And then you don't, like they just did with COVID. Anyway, innovation zones making the key challenges facing society, such as education, underachievement, or poor physical and mental health are complex and multifaceted in seeking to identify and develop new innovative ways of tackling these. We, these, we uh, need to think differently and creatively. So all this is speaking in exalted terms. There's no qualification behind any of this. We just go ahead and promote that. But you notice, who are they after? They're after the weak. They're after those that are incapable. They've talked to you about mental health and how they're going to bring you into a mental health condition. And they'll have a system for you. And they go after the physically poor. Aren't they killing off our old folks? Oh, the most vulnerable. They all die. Well, what happened to this? The underachievement or poor educational underachievement. Isn't the education system being destroyed the production, the, the product of what these people do, like Common Core? So the evidence of what their, their deeds are is before us, if we would just take note. But this is what these people do, and they call this the holistic way. And they bring up the, the pillars within this program of innovation zones. While individual programs and social interventions are important, we also need to understand these built within the broader social, cultural, political, and economic contexts within which they are delivered and to begin thinking and working in more holistic ways. So they give you the pillars, but they're coming through. Cultural has to do with that working through that sense of people and the indigenous sense of people or that racial sense of people. It's a, this is really a racist condition as well. They identify race to try and bring a remedy to it when, in fact, as a country, not supposed to have these race problems. So they actually foment the problem by making it a target. They, if they, you'll see a word, a reckoning. They reckon with that. They actually set a direction in order to exploit it. Anyway, their terminology, getting back to what I was telling my colleague, the terminology here is all consistent when you understand what you're looking at. And this was a natural, this becomes part of the beyond sustainable development thing that comes up right while I'm trying to explain to him this is all integrated. He's not looking at anything different. It's just that they're using different terms. Now they're promoting these innovation zones. Let me get to now a federal, a document they've created about exploiting this uh, condition. It's called Innovation Zones. It's about what they're going to do ultimately, what for, and the path they're beginning to take. Innovation zones, how the federal government can create thriving, place-based innovation ecosystems. And so here we have that connection to the other article talking about ecosystems where biodiversity becomes more important than you. And thriving has to do with the future we want, not yours, and place-based has to be where, well, I'm going to put myself right here, and I'm going to be working as a parasite in order to eat out the substance and create this thing with this cancer, as a cancer inside this system, because the people are too stupid to see what we're doing and too apathetic to stop it. And this is what uh, this is a document that you can get. You have a link. I'll read just the first part. I'm going to get to just one organization and to move on. Uh, you're going to hear all the same words I said before. A policy paper, a policy. This is their policy on how they're going to influence what sits there as available to latch onto in the federal system. It's not quite yet focused on them. But as I told you, Biden is conducive. This was set up coming before in order to uh, prime the pump, if you will. A policy paper based on a workshop conducted in September 2020. Were you invited, folks? Yeah, would you have atter- attended? I doubt it. But anyway, you weren't invited. I wasn't invited. With the H R and A, Carnegie Mellon 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 University, University of Tennessee, H R A, another representative, two times in this one, 
And this becomes these uh, property development real estate people. Ventus, new localism. Okay? It's all, they're ahead of us. They've got these organizations already. Global Institute on Innovative Districts. And I want you to remember that as the federal district because they actually speak in the context of going after federal leverage funds in the context of districting which I've talked to you in the military consequence, and I'm going to get to the punchline here eventually, I hope. <laughs> and I'll show you that this is what they're after. But they found a particular interesting path, which I have to give these people credit. They, aren't, they, are really, they do have time to think, and they think their pathway fairly clearly on how they're going to do and accomplish their plan. And they do a pretty good job here. The executive summary. Before I do that, let me go back to the age... RNA. Who, who the heck is this group that's got two people representing this one workshop? And uh, we go to the website. It's uh, hnradvisors.com, I think. Uh, we founded this firm to increase opportunities and improve quality of life for people who live in cities. You have to understand, I already connect this up. They're talking about getting leveraged federal funding to do inter innovation zones in rural areas. But they're going to do the quality of life for people in, that live in cities. No one asked them, but here they are. We create and implement real estate strategies to unlock value and establish vital places. Vital places to them is not the vital place that you might think. And, and they certainly could care less about your, by your vital place, your little plot of land. Okay, that was my interjection. That's what you're going to find out. We create and implement transformative economic development plans that fuel long-term growth. It, it, this is just the heading that they tell you, folks. You don't have to read hard to figure this guy and these people out. I, to, I just prepped all this up, and here's all the words. It's funny, funny, I read this stuff. I half read this. I go back, and I'm thinking, well, I just talked about all this. It's all here. I didn't, I didn't read this far. I just noticed this is what they do. That's all I need to know. I'll come and I start reading it more deeply for you. And I, Well, here's all, the, here's all the terms I said you'd find. Here's what they're telling you they're here to do. Genghis Khan using stalking horses. This is, I've explained, and this is planned out since 1985 in the guru papers I've read behind a woodshed. We create and implement innovative programs. Innovation zones, innovative. Innovation, human habitat, it's all connected. Transformative, economic development. I said they're coming underneath economics, under growth. It's all here, right here. They're telling you who they are. And you know, they got lots of people to sign on to this, and every time these people run into your town, they eventually have the taxpayers pay more property tax for less services and more uh, imposition and, uh, and hardship eventually. It's partly why you see the Bar Association allowing their judicial branch uh, system to tack on unitarian taxes and special fee taxes and assessments for their so-called legal system. It's all through the same stuff. These people go into a commissioner and they uh, commissioners and they said we got a oh we want to do mental health program to help the people that need mental health because we're finding out that the justice and to crime can be benefited if we do so and the county says good sounds like a good idea they don't tell them that when you tack that on it's an endless stream of funding that the ta the property taxpayers have to pay it doesn't help anybody actually it's all a promotion anyway, getting back onto this. We create innovative programs. Those are innovation zones. We are a mission-driven advisory firm of urbanists who care deeply about the future of communities. What are they doing supporting innovation zones in the countryside if they're urbanists? Is should be your first question. Well, what I told you, well, who are these communities? These future communities are not you or yours. These are their communities. They deeply care about future communities, not yours. That's why they kill people. That's why they don't serve anybody, actually. They come into the color. That's why the uh, the native, the indigenous indigenous people get shafted every time they turn around. HRNA partnered with the Ford Foundation to create a guide for local leaders looking to build a just and resilient recovery. Just, resilient, and recovery are capitalized. Those aren't words. That's a title. I don't know if you've done any search on the Ford Foundation. I did a long time ago. They, The Ford Foundation owns a lot of property. A lot of your local, what is it, um, malls, your, 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 your business malls in particular, like for food, Safeway in particular. 
many, many, many years ago, we had a problem with someone getting threatened or arrested at a Safeway for having a signboard on a piece of property that they were speaking of. And it came out, I found out that the Ford Foundation owned that property. But then I found out that the Ford Foundation was funding and supporting a program that the signboardist uh, was count was uh, was uh, protesting against. And so these have been long-term organizations inside, foundations like philanthropists, inside the system, supporting and sending money in to diminish the land around and or take control of property around you, whether you knew this or not. But here it is. Uh, they talk strictly up right here. The food recovery, food forward recovery, food systems in the food economy of the United States are in crisis. Addressing this crisis is central to a just and resilient recovery. But who are these people? How did they know? We weren't in crisis before the fraud of COVID. But they did put those modernizations act from the federal side in, didn't they? Back in 2010 or so, right? I reported on all this. It's all sitting in here to talk about. Uh, they have talked about the advisors. They go right to food, even though they talked about real estate. How is that? Cities have been on the front lines of Biden's crisis, cascading crisis, crises. Here's what they should do next. Like they have a, an opinion. And so they provide it because there's a receiver on the other, other end. Whether they're blaming Biden here, I don't know. What these people, I'm telling you, is HRA is not just some real estate company. They tell you about future projects. They realize equity and justice. That's not equity in law. That's their justice and their equity. Where you are living in austerity and you are pushed below the standard of the lowest so everybody can be equal. This is the race to the bottom. This is no child left behind. They're expanding West Coast initiatives to realize equity and justice. This is not the, these are titles. These are not what they're doing. Strategic planning framework for Atlanta's tech square. They're already in Atlanta. Strategic planning, as I told you, that's part of the, that's beginning the process. NYC internet master plan. Here's another term, master plan. They create the plan for your local area. Internet master plan is going to be 5G. I don't have to read more. This is the implementation. They're already in the pocket of the people that sit in the government. Inclusive incentive strategy for Indianapolis. Metro areas. Equ uh, I'm just going through a list of things on their website. Equitable economic development and mobility strategy for Grand Rapids. They're up in Michigan already. And I'll tell you, these titles are not because they haven't spent a lot of money to do this or haven't gotten a lot of money to do their studies and promote their promotions. The Ion and South Main Innovation District Master Plan and Development Strategy. These people are so far ahead of what's going on, it's scary, actually. And none of it, this is all around metro areas. What are they doing in the rural now? Is what I've been telling you about the university system. The Highline Transformation. Are these terms any different than what we said before? Going through UN Habitat. And they want to create a racial equity agenda for the United States Conference of Mayors. This brought up alone, these people are addressing your commissioners through these councils, uh, these uh, Conference of Mayors, the Association of Council of Commissioners through the states, and for the states, and for the governors. All the officials are listening to these people that are creating a racial agenda. All right? These guys create the harm that they want to be able to answer. And the mayors are listening to it. Anybody who lives, you want to complain about all the wrongness of the government, local government, uh, the, here's some of the source of it. Solicitation and transaction management for the Salesforce Transit Center. The Trans Bay Joint Powers Authority successfully procured a facility management and programming partner for the $6 billion Salesforce Transit Center. Public, private, Partnership in Facility Management and Programming. Programming what? Your society. Economic Value Study of the Dallas Park System. Practice Area. At the, near the bottom. Real Estate Development Advisory. Let me point out, I just remember now, the word advisory. This is in through federal law as well, through agencies. You can be an advisory council to the lead agency. You are part and parcel to the decision-making process inside the process. 
How do I know that? This is what we've combated inside the B J Jefferson Money District comments. But we out these people for not being the authority they claim they are, and we identify how they don't have more say than the policy can say, and that doesn't just cannot undermine the law. And so, when you, again, when you understand this, it's really quick to get to the point. It's not as convoluted as it might sound as I go through these disparate type sounding ideas. HRNA is an industry leader in providing comprehensive real estate strategies to unlock value and create vibrant places. Places. This is big development. This is strategic development. You consider war against you. As the word strategic implies, you might get a better flavor. You see all this pretty stuff going up, or you see this organization and this consolidation. This is to actually undermine your, your, your government and undermine you. You're taking all this energy, and they're going to now dump it into undeveloped areas out in the middle of nowhere, in Nevada, to create these so-called innovation areas that they're going to now not get them from the local taxpayer, they're not going to go move their move that they found that they've got a they've got a spigot in the federal government if they can just get them to agree and that pump has been primed. I don't even know how what's going to weigh here. Economic development strategy. It's not economic development. Then it's only to the tertiary beneficiaries within the government, licensees, real estate agents, CPAs, the lawyers, attorneys. And so, you gotta, when I talk here quickly, you really have to, I know it's a little bit maybe difficult to hear the concept and move it over, but I'm talking about this insider type stuff that is under the color of legitimate government, using the government in order to come against you. H&R, parasitically as well. H&R, HRNA has over three decades of experience developing visionary solutions to revitalize downtowns, neighborhoods, districts, cities, and regions into job-producing, community-strengthening assets. Community-strengthening is strengthening them, sustainable development, the green religion. Job-producing is job-producing jobs for them, not for you. You may have a side job. You may be a supportive role because you get to now check out somebody, but you're not going to be on the inside money like the contractors up in Portland making apartments at some awful price. Stack them and pack them that make the money and give license and subsidy to build size skyscrapers to put you in a cubicle. And your job is right down below to run this place against you. The Brooklyn Tech Triangle Strategic Plan. Again, strategic in my sense, this is the war. They make strategic plans like a war against you. And as long as you don't respond, eventually you get it. Well, it, it's, it eats from your life the whole time. I don't know what else to say. You don't see it. You don't think you see it. You're willing to give it up, and it's too much trouble. But that's what's going on now. You're being affected by it now. The HR and A designs and manages programs that influence. This is all about influence. So this is, I think, I don't have that influence with the commissioner. Somebody, my colleagues do. And so I let them take the influence part. I'll be, I'll be one of these guys behind the scenes doing the strategies on how we try to subvert these guys. But it takes someone to be able to allow the influence. These people have teams of people that work on how to be influential, to influence market behavior, improve communities, and affect policy change. Talking transition. They improve communities are their communities. Don't ever forget, it's not just about people. It's mostly about the ecosystem, their system, which professes to look at biodiversity, which you are a threat to. Affect policy change. That's the direct threat against you. This is what I'm talking about. They make policy changes. They make advisory council suggestions to federal agencies or even state agencies as advisory councils, and that's defined in federal law what an advisory council is. And they are sitting right there at the ear of the agency making policy changes that affect your life directly. And I get people that want to know how in the heck this, it's all so screwed up. This is how, folks. It's one of the, just one little fact. It's one little story sent to me by an emailer saying this doesn't look good. Innovation zones dropped off in the middle of Nevada, middle of nowhere, dropped off. But you look at what's going behind it and you see who, who's attached to it. And it's, it's kind of scary. So they said that they're, up top, they were talking about reckoning. 
they're going to, what, reckon with racial something I, I read? That's, I tell you, what they do is they actually use that. They, It's a shot in the dark, if you will. So what what does that mean? What are they, racial equality? That That's what they're going to use. To, it's a stalking horse. They're going to focus on that in order to destroy, get a foot in to solve a problem that doesn't exist and shouldn't exist in a society that doesn't, that, that is, is supposed to be really essentially racially blind anymore. And I think it really has been. Nothing's perfect, but it's not just on racial lines. It, it's You can just dislike people, period. And they've tried to take that away. But when I look at the word reckoning, when they were talking about this, and we they mentioned it, uh, the only thing I could find, except one definition, has to do with accounting, has to do with billing statements, it has to do with settlements, and that ties in the reckoning using social justice or using racial equity, equality, as a stocking horse is their line in to leverage funding, and they're telling you essentially they're going to use that, they're going to focus on that in order to open accounting lines leverage funding lines in order to implement what they want in the future for their community, which is a bunch of profiteers and green religious people or those that are profiteers using the green religion as a cover. Okay, so just go look at the word reckoning. You'll find it's mostly about accounting. That, I say, to me, speaks to, to the leverage funding. And that speaks heavily to me because that's what triggered, again, our lawsuit when you finally see what's going on, you know you follow the money. And once they were starting to pay for how they were going to destroy property rights and law and how they were going to su- subvert it and or go around it, that provided the cause. And anyway, so like I said, it's not a direct attack. The Fed, I'll go on to this document. The federal government absence in innovation, innovation district story is no surprise. So now they're doing an analysis here on how, what they're going to do to develop an influential position in order to now tap something that they've found at a federal level. Innovation districts sit, again, these are districts, not zones, but districts. And I want to tie this into the military districts, and I want to tie this into the districts of the United States government, federal, and they're not states. We have the Washington district, D.C. district. It sits at the intersection of two distinct policy domains, not law. And this, when you start reading this, you start finding out. I, I look at that, my mind goes, Achilles' heel. I'm going to look right to attack that. And so I guess I, when I read this, I also have, like I told you, i got a different view I'm looking. I'm looking for these. They're telling me what they're going to do, how they're going to come. They also told me that they're limited to come through this passageway. I'm going to set up an ambush. Or I'm not. if I'm going to have to walk and pass through it, I'm not going through that ambush center. And so when I read this, you know, I know I do it now, even though this is not going to be a project that I necessarily get involved with. I'm telling you, this is what my mind starts to read. It all happens at once that I'm trying to communicate to you that you may or may not be aware of. Innovation, as I read, innovation districts at the uh, uh, sit at the intersection of two distinct policy domains. That's only policy. That's the only power they have, and it's through influence. And I know through practice that when they do that, their policy and influence can cause someone to make decisions that are uneducated in law, about the law. And I'm not talking about like a lawyer or attorney. I'm talking about property rights about the Constitution and your remedies and the things that they don't have right to do. They're just talked right past that. And there's not an intelligence in people to know that that's what's going on. But the intersection of two policy domains, innovation policy and economic development policy. And I, I'm going to speed it up here, but I want to just kind of develop the background here. Economic development is what they already promote in the government. What they don't promote so much is innovation policy. This is going to go down now. They've been they've been feathering their nest with the economic development policy, which we focus on because that's what they do. And our economic development policy is not production. It's strictly the tertiary government. And so they are taking from that, and the property owners, which should be in the production side, even though your house sits on it, you're still sitting in that because of your patent and the disposal of the land. They yank you up into the tertiary, and then they tax your property, and they give it to all these people. Well, now that is running out, that source That leverage funding source locally is running out. They're now looking to the almost unlimited source of the federal government. Now, as you watch these uh, bills, money out of mind type financial uh, bills going through about how much money that is going, trillions and trillions in budget, which you you don't even get a drop to. But at any rate, it doesn't matter. People, I guess, are 
living off of every cent of it and don't care. Intersection of two distinct policy domains, innovation policy and economic policy. They're already doing economic development, a parasitic attachment. They're looking now for the innovation policy. At the federal level, unfortunately, there is currently limited alignment and coordination between these two arenas. Federal innovation policies, including the grant-making activities of the National Science Foundation. Remember, best science. They're tying in. They're realizing where they're going to get all this. They've been doing this, but now they're making it known and attaching it to an innovation structure so they can get more money from the feds to power this system, this this community against you. The uh, National Institute of Health of all places, folks. If you don't think these people are involved with COVID-19 in the university system and John Hopkins, it's right here. Innovation Zones is the title they're coming underneath to do this. Pulling from the federal teat, if I can say that. It's, unta- it's, it's unlimited at this point, I can tell. Department of Defense. If you don't think this is a military consequence, they know they can get money to do this against you, and the DOD will give them money for it. The Department of Energy. Those of you in Texas, don't mess with Texas. You know, watch how that you get tied into this system as well. You had your own internal energy corruption. When you tie into the bigger one, the Department of Energy is going to be involved. Why do you think that they agree to have your dams shut down in the Pacific Northwest if they were actually agreeing that you need to have power for your purposes? And this is money available that these people, these innovation zones, promoting, promoting sustainable development, which is you and Habitat urbanists, are looking to make funds from, to actually make their living parasitically off of it at your detriment. And others, they say, channel funds to individual companies. These people, chan- these organizations channel funds to individual companies or research institutions to enhance, enhance national competitiveness, but have not yet leveraged the advantages of physical proximity to supercharge innovation activity. This is their promotion. Meanwhile, federal economic development policies, including most recently the Opportunity Zones Program, introduced in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, incentivize the investment of private capital into unreserved communities, underserved, excuse me, underserved communities, not insufficiently leveraged proximate innovation ecosystems to drive sustainable long-term growth. They found another victim. They found another teat to drop onto or some other body to attach to. A new federal innovation zone program promoting investment innovation districts offers a powerful tool to enhance. Remember that enhance is part of this process. They call it enhancement. It has nothing to do with enhancing your life, but them. Both national and regional competitiveness. Regional is taking beyond borders of your state and moving it internal or external or both across border. You're, you have regional regions that are not necessarily attached to, well, they're not attached to government. They talk regional weather. It has nothing to do with regional weather at all. It's not the same type of regional. They're priming your mind for metro, metropolitan. Regional and regional cross-border integrations, which is eventually validate your local your borders and your local government. They, so going moving on, a new federal uh, innovation zone program is what they're now looking for, particularly in parts of the country that have yet to benefit from the knowledge economy. That's academia. They're going to promote themselves to go in and put themselves in as a cancer in your area where they aren't already. This is outside the city. The parasitic amoeba is now on the move. As I said, they would be here coming into 2020, and now we're into 2021, and they've been moving. All right, here's how long. Decades of research now demonstrates that innovation economy thrives best in dense, porous, multi-sectoral settings, why? Because all you are apathetic and you think your leaders in your towns are able to do it. This is really speaking back to Metro and these cities. And a 2003 study, for instance, found that spillover benefits of software companies are 10 times greater when firms are a mile apart 
than when they are between two and five miles apart by leveraging proximity in its allocation of research dollars. The federal government has the opportunity to amplify the impact of its investments. Similarly, the linking educational and workforce programs in low and moderate income neighborhoods to nearby innovation districts, the federal government can create the more sustainable economic engine for communities that are less connected or worse, disconnected from the knowledge economy. Is that production, folks? No. Nothing here is talking about what sustains you as a nation. It's about imparting the parasitic tertiary and above economy. It's actually below. I've got to put it above because most people think up. This is the base, the bottom of the stinking abyss coming up. And it's going to leverage the power of the federal government's purse in order to now come at you through innovation on knowledge economy. Now, I don't know about how many of you can feed yourself on your knowledge. I don't know how many of you can survive by just thinking your way to the next minute, the next day, the next month. I've heard some breatharians can do it. I tried that. Didn't work so good. Maybe I'm not the man I should be. I couldn't think my way breathing to the next, well, I've, I've fasted quite a long time. I couldn't go a month. Not breathing. Because my knowledge wasn't sufficient. But these people think your society will run on knowledge economy. Because what are, the, what are they? They're the university system underneath there. They're the academics pushing this. If you will, these is the heart and the seat of uh, communitarianism, Marxism, socialism, uh, fascism, the thing, the technocracy that we're hearing. This is the knowledge economy. The urbanists, the urban thinker, exalt themselves so high against you. And you're nothing. This is no different than dealing with an attorney. They think you're nothing. When you bring the law, they don't even see it. Why? Because they're not taught in law. And they're the judges. And so, keep going. <laughs> so much no nonsense that we keep uh, allowing in our, in our face as a people that call themselves free. Finally, by embracing its role. I hope when I do these emphasis, I hope they are emphasized words. This is all the words. I, I get a... I don't embrace me. Don't touch me is what I get right here. But they're going to embrace its role in supporting regional innovation ecosystems. Now you think that's environment, but that's still it is. But it's not what they're talking about. This is talking about their system, that ecosystem. They've altered that word, and yet underneath that is a focus on ecosystems based on the international biodiversity treaty, which where people are a cancer, where people are the problem. Anthropomorphic, right? The federal government can reshape the country's economic geography on a more equitable basis, creating new opportunities for growth, growth for job growth. It's growth, is, it doesn't matter what area, they go, whether it's jobs or agricultural or tech, it's growth. It's still underneath this thing. An investment in the nation's heartland. What did I tell you, Vilsack? He came in and destroyed the, the heartland, the heart of the heartland. He stabbed, a, he stabbed a knife in the heart of production by saying, you folks are politically inert, and we'll tell you now what's going to happen. This is it, folks. This is what they're going to tell them. So they're telling you they're already there. They're telling you they're going to expand, as I read this, to enhance place-based innovation ecosystems. Is this a mouthful of nonsense here, folks? This is what they're doing. People, have, I'm, I'm sure people stopped listening to me by now, but this is so important to understand who's in your own county right now. These, these people are not just on this document. They're not just in your academia. They're not just in the metropolitan. They're in every county in this, in this United States. They're in every province. They're in every local governmental administration in Kanukistan, in Australia, in, uh, in the UK. They're everywhere COVID wasn't stopped. I don't mean just saying, oh, we're not going to do the match because I'm South Dakota and I'm the governor. No, I mean where it was stopped, you had none of this, which was nowhere, folks. At any rate, this is all the same thing and by the same reason. The first investments in district development will provide the dense physical environments necessary for innovation economies to thrive. What did I, you hear there? I heard that's their Achilles here, here, um, uh, heel. If I can interfere with them being able to make that dense environment, they can't live. 
They require this densification, stack them and pack them. And your property rights stand between them and you and them accomplishing their goal and, and, and you and your, and your rights. And they're telling you right here what their weakness is. Second, investments in talent development will cultivate the expertise needed to drive cutting-edge research and diversify the talent pipeline of local workers and students. All these people that got into permaculture classes at their local university system instead of doing agriculture. Yeah, that sets the pipeline of this mental midgetry, mental mediocrity. At any rate, uh, third, invest, third, investments in research and development will supercharge local and national competitiveness by targeting federal R&D spending with the specific innovation geographies. Now remember, I'm starting this from the story of, of innovation zones, and I'm still moving on this one document that talks toward this and where they're looking for funding and how Nevada will be developed outside of the state. But the state will agree, like it's done on so many things, to funnel through its system, and the governor will be keeping tabs on the board that runs these private uh, companies, corporate pump companies, uh, as as, corporate, as co um, counties. District development. Now we're back to districts. Don't underestimate the word military district here. Uh, not to the exclusion of the others. The federal government should create, this is a policy influencing type uh, document, should create an innovation zone program that awards funds for physical and programmatic investments in 25 designated districts throughout the country. Proposed districts should be between 100 and 350 acres in size. In Nevada, they're going 58.6, I think. 58,000, 58,000. Uh, 600 acres, if you have that much land. This is not just a, what they did in Kanukistan. You see this is predating, or this is coming now to our knowledge, and it was d what Google did up in Kanukistan. To promote regional economic convergence. See, it's an inclusion. They're pulling at regional includes the rural. They're going to yank you as a, as a country folk into their control structure. Again, I, I read this a whole different way. Maybe people don't, maybe you think I'm kind of nuts when I read it this way. But w w I just know you don't know what, what there is to know. Uh, that when you read this stuff, you can see what the plan is. And you can see how to destroy it. And until you do, you won't understand. Maybe you don't want to understand. But this is just the Genghis Khan at your door that you're just ignoring. You're thinking that it, it's like the cops, the SWAT team out your door. If you go, go la, 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 while they're banging on your door with a, with a mallet that they're not going to come in. And so that, this is why it's so important that you really take an interest. I hate reading this stuff. It, may, it actually gives me indigestion. I don't like hearing it too much, but I, it's so important I want to kind of get this through. It's not like I like uh, talking about it. It's important. It's what's needed to be exposed. If, if you want a future in your in your land, in your country, and you don't want to be taxed incrementally out of it, you all complain already, yet you don't understand the first thing to stop it. So that's my first notice to you, uh, from you, that uh, you're going to be these people that just continue to be eventually moved out of your land, essentially, is how that works. And you might work already until you die. You might be that old. And I suppose maybe a lot of people listen to me or that, that time when you're finally given up. You finally said, oh, I don't want to work on all this. I certainly have made that discussion. I realized that there wasn't going to be much in my life anymore. And I just focused on, I reduced my life down to something, and it became this. For some reason, I said, there's a reason why I need to fight this. And so, but I'm going to, I don't know why, but I'm going to fight it anyway. It means something. I don't even have a, really, I don't even have a dog in that fight. Well, except for the mining claim. Uh, okay, so that's, I guess, one little, but I don't put that much more time into it. I've settled all those, so far, settled the administrative things. They don't talk to us no more. And so that, that other part's done. But for the rest of you all, and you property owners, you people that complain about your taxes and all your fees and all your licenses that you pay for doing things that you should be your livelihood granted to you, that you're supposed to be secured to you by a constitution, and you complain, I'm talking to all you all. This is how they're taking all that away from you. It doesn't sound like it, but it is. No more than five. Okay, well, that's enough. We're going to go through how they're going to let it to catalyze a thoughtful and intentional realignment of federal policy supporting innovation and economic development. The IZ program should be spearheaded by the White House, White House Office of Science and Technology Policy and Domestic Policy Council. 
and include the interagency coalition of federal agencies that engages leaders from the Economic Development Administration, the Small Business Administration, the Departments of Commerce, Defense, Education, Energy, Health and Human Services, Homeland Security, Transportation. I hope I'm piquing some interest in some of you folks about why you don't have the right to travel, why you can't go anywhere, why, you get a, why you're oppressed by COVID, why your energy bills are going up, why the, the government has, sends the military to go help with injections. Homeland Security, why you hear about if you don't like it, you're going to be hauled off for some time, why they're doing that in other countries other than the United States of America. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, where they use all that technology to come tell you how much you're contributing to the threat to Gaia. National Science Foundation, best sciences, it's BS. Okay, they're tying into the other side, the research and development. Let me move down now to the where I found and what I wanted to get to all this time to show you this is not something small. This is not just a group of people in college. This is the system, the university system used no different than the Bar Association is an agency of the state. How it is, I don't know, but it is. It's not just a department. It's not just a, a branch of government. It's an agency. And how people have missed this connection is no longer a, a department of government. I don't know. But this is the, the conduit they're using. This is the pathway they're using. And now they're moving into for leverage funding to sap from you, take from you, we interfere with your life. Contrary to everything I know, contrary to, to your intuition and everything you've read, they're still able to sit there and do this. Not enough people have been stepping up. But this is where they're going with these innovation zones. They're looking for the funding in these areas and who will be involved and what they will be working for. For those of you in Nevada, for those, or those of you that understand that they have innovation zones for everything, even mathematics, this is what's underlying what they're talking about. Research and development, they're moving to supercharge innovation activity. The administration should invest in basic and applied research within IZs, in innovation zones, by point one, providing additional savings and R&D tax credit for startups and companies located within IZs. That's your government giving subsidy through tax credit. Earmarking R&D funding via the NS NSF, NIH, DARPA, and others to support research activity within IZs. Are you listening, Nevada? This is coming to a locale near you, you with a authority of a county soon enough. DARPA. Promoting regional multi-institution grant opportunities to encourage local collaboration. How much have I condemned collaboration? It's part of the weapon they use against your coordination rights in your local counties in order to destroy you and your property rights, destroy your rights to the land. Through what? Non-government organization? Anybody that wants to make an a legal entity that comes together to influence the agency? Collaboration is not something you want to get involved with. Almost every county I know of collaborates, and they shouldn't be. And those counties we've gotten to not collaborate turned it around almost overnight and started to reassert the power they had to protect their people. But one little word right there. Is a, it's a neutron bomb that people don't really recognize. Of all these things I'm reading, this is how they implement this stuff. And I don't think many people, if anybody, really understands any of it. I hope today you get a little bit of, if you're still with me, <laughs> you get a little bit of an influence of what we're up against. And, and then again, I'm reading this, it's taking longer than to, to identify it and shut it down if we would just come together to do so. Promoting regional and, and, and multi-institution grant opportunity. In other words, they're not going to come into local counties. These are multiple counties. This is like your, um, oh, darn it, there's a term. Well, it's a local agency already. A council of governments. This is what these people do. Council of governments is another one of those. These people, uh, these, uh, this organization already controls your county. Creating satellite hubs within IZs linked to military, intelligence, and energy research facilities to speed commercialization of technologies incubated within federal agencies while being mindful of security risks. If you don't see that they've got a wrap on the military 
industrial surveillance system, and they're going to be paid to implement those things. Uh, right there, I don't even know what more to say to y'all. But next point, creating DARPA, D-A-R-P-A, and ARPA E-type entities. Creating legal fictions that can interact to do with things to uh, like doing R&D and commercialization of technologies relevant to federal agencies. Not your local state, not the local county. These IZ zones sitting in Nevada will be for federal instrumentality, federal utility, federal function. And they will be directed by the governor in their board. There's no election. Within federal agencies, while being mindful of security risks. Yeah, they've got to be careful not to be found out. The E-type entities charged with commercialization. Commercial. See, this is the authority of the federal. They understand these people are not stupid. They know the Constitution probably better than most of you listening who think you know. And they know exactly what they're doing relative to the powers that are in there to exploit. Transportation, commerce, and national security agencies and others is not something I would want to be messing with that these people are actually going to exploit. I'm talking, we don't want to mess with them, but they are being exploited by this group of people against you. These should not be this integrated with your city, your your towns, or any, even your state. Nevada should not allow this, but they're going to. It's coming through the university system. You're already kind of done here. This is already what they're moving. They're just looking for the next faucet to get and empower them with the funds and to create the bigger web, if you will, the bigger net to construct and reconstruct and transform your life. And they're going out in the middle of nowhere to get it done because they need to integrate the external rural countryside with their citadels. Restructuring technology transfer officers into loss-leading third-party entities operating the IZ level rather than within universities and providing legal support to standardize industry university commercialization agreements across IZs. There. They said it. This comes from the university systems and their university system academics. The urban thinkers are needing to hide themselves, and they're going to do it through fictions, these corporations, which are going to be positioned in a certain way to go ahead and get the leverage funding they need to survive. And they've got a president and a system in place ready to have this move and in, in happen very quickly. Did you hear it? I'll read it again. Do the third-party entities rather than within universities. What did I talk to you about the university system being the hub of all this nonsense? The academics, the urban thinkers, the ones who declared war on the rural people, the urban-rural divide, making federal funding contingent on commercialization metrics. Why? Because Congress has the control of commerce across the states, don't they? When they go regional, they're not limited to borders either, are they? That By definition, that could be federal. And so they have another veneer they're also throwing over the top of this, encouraging universities to adopt a more entrepreneurial stance towards faculty recruitment and promotion. I don't know what else to say, folks. They're all right there. They're commercializing your university systems to implement sustainable development beyond. They're going to go through the military and best science and your health agencies and your homeland security to do it. What that has to do with your life, I really don't know. But this is the federal government money coming to help these people. It's already on top. The United States government's already been eaten up inside. How I can point out to this stuff so quickly, what we've been up against all for so long. Moving on. All commercialization. They're all in commerce. They know the pathway. But they're trying to bring this through, and the military's not outside of it. Think about that. Trading with the Enemy Act seems to come to mind really quickly when I said that. Creating an IZ voucher. Special privileges here, right? Similar to regional innovation voucher programs already in operation in Tennessee, Colorado, and Rhode Island. If you don't think that Tennessee case is sitting right in the hub of cancer, I don't know what else to say. I hope that helped you out just a little bit of what people are up against in Tennessee. To enable small businesses to obtain free and low-cost consulting services from nearby universities. And if you don't toe the line with them, they will give you the money. 
if you don't sing the high praises through all the things that they want to support the green religion, you won't get the money. If you're a producer, you're not going to get the money. The producers are not under economic development. Did you know that? And if not, why aren't they supporting, if they want to help the people, why aren't they supporting the producer? Why? Because they don't mean to help you. They don't mean to help your country. They mean to tear it down. Just destroy it. And they're going to use the federal government to do it. The federal government's fine with that. They already beat up the South in, in Lincoln's time, and now it's just a better constraint. Who cares? People didn't rise up and, quite, and, and beat that thing down, and so you're paying the price. All They went for a couple hundred years with this, folks, and people don't really pay attention to it. Creating IZ, Innovation Zone, specific venture capital funds to increase access to capital for startups and high-growth companies. High-growth companies. In other words, you present yourself as one like you see HRNA, and you are one of those high growth companies, the promoters of growth, the promoters, and the, with the capacity building and the capacity to do and accomplish the goal to subvert the American people. And anywhere else they plant their foot down. The federal government should provide seeding funding, funding for the creation of IZ specific VC funds virtual capital funds managed by states, localities, government. <laughs> Folks, did you, hear, did you hear the parasite, the leverage funding even back to the local government through these venture capital funds that apparently are already there? They know where they're looking. Managed by states, localities, and community development financial institutions or philanthropic entities with a focus on investment in minority and women-owned businesses. Wow, there you go. There you go. Women, indigenous, and the children, stocking horses. They want to reckon with and, and create the divide with the thought about the women owned, women being subverted somehow, even though they're treated equally, supposedly, and minorities. None of which, actually... On the, on the uptake, are actually in any capacity not able anymore. But this is what they're going to focus on. All have the right that given every plebe in order to get what they're going to give you. And so they're going to use this and they're going to create divides. They're going to create a division for women-owned businesses in order to be there to fix the problem they have created. This is their intent in Innovation Zone. This is what they're doing. I guess even, like I said, even in math, there's math. I couldn't believe this. Mathematics innovation zones. Well, if this is supposed to be integrative of, of all these technologies and bring STEM into it, then why just math? Shows you this is just a cover. But anyway, so here's here it is. Innovation zones are from come from the global urban development, and you have a way, link to global urban development in Brazil. Innovation zones and urban thinkers campus. They go to school. They said they talked to you about that in the documentation. Conduits of information to prime the pumps to keep this thing coming against you. Anyway, you have a link to it. Just the title tells you. Sustainable innovation zones are not different. The innovation zones are beyond sustainable. They're sustainable innovation zones. And Urban Thinkers Campus is the college here in Brazil, as, as this link just shows you. And the thing, the subject matter they talk about that brings up the UN Habitat World Urban Campaign organized an Urban Thinkers Campus together with the prod, a Zispo project at the in, at an engineering school of v, a Villa Flores Cultural Association and Orbita Coworking. All right. This is a catalyst for a new urban agenda. Do you hear anything about rural here being something, production here being supported at all? No. This has to do with tearing all that down. Uh, new urban agenda, sustainable development goals, and Paris Climate Agreement through citizen empowerment, entrepreneurial engagement, and strategic collaboration. So here we have the connection to those IZ zones in Nevada coming in that the governors all promote and have nothing to do with helping anybody are going to be in position, uh, imposing the, the UN Habitat World Campaign, Urban Campaign. Another link, Urban Thinkers Campus uh, for this to explain more and what they're doing. These Urban Thinkers kind of got me going, kind of laughing. And they bring up right here in the graphic 
GUD Sustainable Innovation Zones, Communities, and COVID-19 Resilient Recovery Strategies. If you didn't think this the whole thing is tied together, there it is in one graphic, if you're just willing to take a look at it. And if you have no more than thought when you see that, I don't know what to say because that little graphic, what I just said, that ties that together, shows you where the source of this crime against you is that you're not responding to, how well organized it is, how effectual it is, and how you're still out of position, and how you may never be in position if you're going to be silent. And I say that, and people don't tell me what to do. Or I say that, and, oh, I don't know where to go. Oh, well, I, I'm doing my, my thing. No, none of us are. As much as I'm trying to do what I can do and tell people to protect themselves, not enough. Not enough. And the amount of work it takes to go up against these people when you're by yourself, just a handful of people here and there, it's pretty tremendous. And so where does this go? I just, just tie these things together. Urban habitat, folks. It's urban. It's UN habitat. This is a global order coming to Nevada. And if you look, when you finally get on, you do the innovation zones, and you start seeing where they are. I just showed you. H, uh, HRNA says they're all over the country already. For 30 years, they've been doing, figuring you out. And they've got the info. I just tell you, they've got the influence. And so it's going to take a, 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 some way to address it. It's kind of overwhelming in, in my mind, but uh, it's funny how it, I'm not, I'm not, uh, we've, de we've dealt with it. So I know it's just a matter of getting more people to help. And of all these points, all these Achilles heels, as I've pointed out, uh, they, they have them. If you just know, read it right there, you can know exactly what they're going to do. You can exactly head them off. And it only takes a few discussions here and there to, to, uh, to kill it. It just we need people to do that. But uh, here's where this goes. You've been a habitat, UN Habitat. Uh, this is urban thinkers. They want you to eat bugs. And we went to the EU for the innovation zones there. Here it is. Edible insects likely to hit supermarkets within months. Insects to soon hit European, Europe's, Europe's now, not, not the EU, Europe. What happened to Europe, folks? Uh, supermarkets and become part of our daily diet. Don't, I guess, don't miss that. Europe is not the EU. They're sitting there, too. Silent people like the United States people. Silent. The people of production and life and livelihood are sitting with a lid over their head and not saying anything. Europe sits there to speak yet. The United States of America sits there to speak yet, but you're willing to have districts placed over you of control. The breakthrough comes after last month's European Food and Safety Authority, the EFSA, published a scientific opinion concluding that dried yellow mealworm is safe for human consumption. That's all they care about. It's safe for your consumption, like your vaccines are safe. And they went to where? The scientific opinion. Ties over to what? The National Science Federation. Best BS, right? Best science. They just get the proof, and now that comes into being. And they wean you off the other stuff because you aren't doing your own. Well, you're probably not doing your own. The first, uh, This is the first time in EFSA, an independent agency of the EU that monitors the food chain, releases a complete evaluation on an insect-derived food diet. How long have we been saying, how long have I been saying, this was here to come soon, and now we're seeing it. Customers that, again, don't don't think that EU is over there compared to the IZs in the United States of America. They're the same. Coming to a county as a county near you. Customers asked for independent investigation after new smart meters caused spike in power bills. Again, we've come up another story on and on and on. This comes around. These smart meters. Remember, blockchain LLC making smart cities. And they want to know why your power is going up because they can program the smart meter and or by the moment they can do the reckoning for your power usage by the second, by the microsecond. Talk about day trading, microsecond day trading. That's what they do with your smart meter. I think people in tenant, we, are, we talked about Texas. Don't mess with Texas. They're messing with you and you're letting them mess with you. Uh, utility start meters, electric, gas, and water are expensive, unnecessary, and plagued with problems, including measurement errors. This is the smart city keeping track of everything you do. And this is what's coming from this UN habitat nonsense. And they, how do they do that? What did you see? They bring, they're telling you how they do the IZ zone that then's given the power to tax and provide services upon which they then control the price. And it's based in what? Austerity. You'll all be pushed to equality, which is has to push you to the bottom rung 
while they take the cream of the crop and they pilfer and plunder and pillage the country folk for their production. Why you see California and the water problem down there and why people can't produce food anymore, the richest, one of the richest agricultural places being decimated. Thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of trees destroyed because there's no so-called water. There's water everywhere. And as William Roberts used to say, not a drop to drink. Because of what? The community of fish needing to be equal there. And uh, the science wouldn't support it either. either. As I, maybe if I can get there here, another thing. Earth greened 10%, all these climate change freaks. I meant, I meant that lovingly. Earth greened 10% and Sahara shrinked 700,000 square miles this century, says NASA Vegetation Index data. And so all this, they talk about this global warming, carbon dioxide, all this stuff. They are just thrilled that 700,000 acres are now greened over the last couple years, 20 years or so. 20 years is what it says here. Fantastic. What do we say behind a woodshed? Well, even with all the rain moving around and the change of the climate, not climate change, but the change of the climate, as climate variability causes the dynamics of the world and the earth cause climate variability, we would actually probably see if there was a, co uh, um, given that there's a, a corresponding increase in carbon dioxide, an increase in the food available, the, the respiration available to a plant to grow. And so we see the effect of that right here. This is more science than, than their promotion. And so we can see what nature does. It, it seems to be fine. It's this, this promotion by these urban thinkers that can't, supposed to be intellect, they're supposed to be imposing, they impose knowledge, theirs, over reality that we are not agreeing to, that science, the, 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 our sensors, if you will, science looking at satellites and doing this uh, fantastic technology uh, in doing sensors about our, to understand our world, doesn't mean we know it, we just can see what it's doing, are telling us that the Earth responds pretty well. And, and we can be predictable when we're not, we're not a mental case. Uh, Canada's quarantine hotels backfire as people starved. But here we have a, a government that can't even do it. How do you think a corporation is going to take care of you when they're given the power of a county? A couple of weeks ago, a Canadian government introduced a new set of rules forcing international air travelers to quarantine in hotels for three days upon arrival. The plan has since backfired after a series of endless chaotic setbacks, including food shortages and even alleged sexual assaults. Isn't that just the definition of the UN and modernization under food security modernization? Under everything else that they do to protect the women, the children, and the indigenous. An increase in the very things they come in, came in to tell you that they were going to help solve because they're the ones with the innovation, innovative solutions. And people haven't figured out it's all to make their profit. Moving in and through to, into the so-called COVID nonsense again. Uh, New York testing COVID passport. We said it's coming. Here it is. New York is rolling out an app to use to show coronavirus status to enter sport and entertainment venues. What have I said about what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to be able, if, well, I don't even know why you would go to these places. These are just entertainment venues, they said. All right, so why are you going there anyway? But if you want to go in, you're going to have to have your phone, which has your QRC and your validation, vaccination, confirmation that you're okay and this is a discrimination we talked about last week and when i get there i'm going to give you a couple another place to go to kind of look and hopefully help yourself out if you need a guidance that i can't give you uh, behind woodshed here on the broadcast but if you need some more uh, organized sense of how to go about it i found another guy thank you to another emailer but before i get there new york legislature to strip democratic governor andrew cuomo over emergency powers amid scandals Oh, the fraud of COVID wasn't enough that these legislatures are going to skid, uh, going to, going to uh, strip these powers from Cuomo. It's just ludus, lunacy on its, on its face that I don't know why people in New York just don't step up. Again, they can step up now because of the scandals, but they couldn't step up because of the fraud that destroyed their state and killed people, literally killed people in New York. A fascination to me. A fascination we put up with it. What about our fellow men and women? Who's letting ourselves down? And moving on to what do we do? How do we set our, our, ourselves up? What are, uh, is the position? I've told you, we, I've been after stopping the fraud of COVID and the emergencies. I've been, we kind of take the hard, the hard road in a way, take, the, take the, um, the needs out of the government as quickly as possible. That's where I've been focused. 
But because people have not been rolled, rolling along very well, and they keep getting involved in doing the mitigation side, I've been trying to offer you other things you can try to do uh, about, and I think uh, John Jay was one who says, do your administrative record, all consistent with what I've been telling you. But they stay, they talk in a more uh, centralized and consolidated space, and they kind of do the point by point for you. I do too, but it, it doesn't. People don't like to go to the statutes to actually get knowledge for themselves. They'd rather feel good that there's steps they can take and then how to do it, which is fine too. If that's what you need, I want you to be pre- protected in the way you understand. I was given an email, and I don't have a complete way to underwrite all of this, but I did run across um, what's called a Beth Martin interview. Uh, with Alphonse Fagiolo, and he uh, has some interesting information and discussion on a video, too, for those of you that like to listen to this, about the steps you can take are similar to John Jay in how you make a record on how you go after these people when they violate you, and not just in COVID. So here's someone else who lays it out, and I wanted to advance this because the this video here will help you if you take notes. And I'm looking up, see, free and slave, nobody cares here. Well, that might be. Someone has to care. You care. You know, we, there's, some of us care. And I understand that. That's a frustration I have. But I don't know. I can't. We can't direct everybody. We can only hope that they want to step up and be responsible. But anyway, here's a, for those of you looking for a more specific, point-for-point point thing on what to do, like John Jay offered, here's Alphonse Fagiolo. Now, I also offer something. He says, here's his six points. Uh, on its surface, he's pointing from a, to a website he has that he goes through the highlights of the overview. And it's really similar, if not the same, of what I've been telling you. Although I incorporate some of like his status affidavit, I will have you incorporate in your letters. I haven't seen his work because I don't have access to his website because I won't give a, an email. And this is what, my, what I don't like about it's open information if you give an email. He admits he's been under scrutiny. I've been telling you, don't allow scrutiny upon you. And so I will not, I'm not a joiner that way. I will not put an email to get the information. I can tell you on the overall surface and hearing him talk, you'll hear a lot of me, not that we've ever talked or we've had any any similarity of anybody that researched anything that we've never done together. He came down the path his way. He will sound very familiar as I, as I do. There's a couple points. Again, there's going to be a little contention. Generally, I'm not that little bit of contention is not a factor. Okay, and so uh, if you can't hear it from me, you want it laid out a little more matter of fact. Uh, I like I like the way he communicates it. Maybe better than I do. Th- this link will help you. And his six steps, general steps, is what you really need to follow. But I would not I would not sign up to get his information. I tell you how you can do that documentation just by the title on the on this on the six step process it's up to you you can sign up if you want i don't like putting my a name and an email to anybody if he's under scrutiny he's being tracked out there's people in that organization whether he knows it or not that are keeping track of everybody and you become like the bundies eventually on an attack that you didn't know was coming so i would offer that he should open up that data database to everyone without registration he has his reasons. I don't want to. I've never talked to him, so maybe, maybe it's valid. But I will not sign up. I want to caution you on signing up for that. It's tempting, tempting, to want to do that. I've told you I really have to chew my lips sometimes because sometimes there might be information that I don't have or that someone does better that you need to know. So thank you, Grimner. What you do, really media.com. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Can of whoop ass feels like. Son, 
I just opened a whole case of wolf ass. <laughs>